Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, in this one we're going to be talking about how to make git clone faster. I'm going to show you two different ways to do that. Uh, one way that only works for the main branch, another way that works for any branch or any revision that you want to check out. Uh, so let's jump into that. Okay, so the first way that I'm going to show you uh, is, is probably the simplest one and I use this a lot when I'm poking around repositories and I don't care about the history at all. That's actually the the one way that we're going to speed it up is we're going to ignore history. Um, so like if I want to see how, you know, the Linux kernel does something, I will clone the Linux kernel um, in this particular way. Or if I want to see how, you know, CPython does something, if I don't have CPython hanging around, I will clone it in this way. Because both of those repositories have a very extensive history and that history often dominates the download time for cloning a repository. Um, but yes, yeah, so let me show you an example. Uh, we're going to be using the virtual env repository because it clones reasonably fast, but you can see a very different, uh, a very big time difference in the cloning speed. So if we do time get clone get at github.com pypa slash virtual uh, you'll see that this takes, and uh, my network connection is pretty fast, so I, you know, I have like 15 or so me megabits per second. Uh, and you'll see that this took about six and a half seconds to download the repository. Uh, but we can actually improve on that uh, by removing the history. So we're going to use git clone, but we're going to do dash dash depth equals one. This tells git how many commits back from the, the branch that we're fetching uh, that it should clone. So in this case, it'll say, you know, ignore most of the history, but just give me the, the top one commit. Um, and you'll see if we do this now, uh, it completed much faster. So it only took two seconds instead of six seconds. Uh, you'll also notice that this transferred like 85 megs, whereas here it only transferred about seven. Um, and so it completed much faster. Now, the one downside to depth equals one is if we CD into virtual env and do get log, you'll notice that there's no history here. So if you want to do any sort of history analysis or like figure out why something changed or, you know, look at git blame or any of those sorts of things. Actually, does git blame work? It shouldn't work, right? Source virtual env invo. Yeah, git blame doesn't is is not helpful. It just says some commit before this commit. <laughs> um, but yeah, so any anything dealing with history will not be present there. And if you look at git log, you'll see this grafted here. And what grafted means is that it simplified the the history before that uh, and just gave you this kind of dangling commit. It's kind of a a little bit of a special case for git. Now, this really only works for branches and main branches. You can use git clone dash dash branch dash dash depth, uh, but it doesn't work for revisions in general, which uh, or, or like tags or other stuff like that. Uh, it might work for tags. I don't remember. But anyway, I'm going to show you a way that works for all of those and is a little bit more consistent. However, it requires a new enough version of git and a new enough version of the server. Um, and this might change if you're watching this video in the future, like this might become the default uh, fetch methodology, but right now you have to do a little bit of extra work to make this work possibly, pro uh, properly. And this is actually how pre-commit does clones at, you know, particular revisions. So for this case, we're going to try and clone the pre-commit hooks repo, and we're going to try and clone that at version 3.0.0. Uh, the current version is like 3.4. something, or I don't, I don't actually remember what version it is. Uh, but we're going to try and do it at 3.00. And the way we're going to do this is kind of a little bit more complicated than our just our nice and simple uh, get clone dash depth one. We actually have to do a bunch of work to set this up. Um, so I'm going to start by doing git init. We're going to initialize an empty repository. So we're going to do git init pre-commit hooks. Uh, this actually somewhat simulates how git clone actually works, but um, we're going to do it kind of manually. So first we'll initialize the repository, and then we're going to set the remote. We're going to get remote add origin at github.com. Uh, that's going to be too long. Oops. <laughs> that's not what I wanted. Uh, get remote add origin. Sorry, I did that because I knew it was going to cut off on my face. Uh, get at github.com colon pre-commit slash pre-commit hooks. This is actually going to error because I accidentally created the remote above there. But anyway, ignore all, <laughs> ignore all of this. Pretend I just ran this command. Um, you'll see now that we have this remote set up. However, we have not fetched anything from it. And this is where the, the magic comes in. This is where we want to say that we're fetching a particular revision with depth one. And we can do that by doing git fetch dash dash depth equals one and v3.0.0. Uh, at the time of writing, you need to manually opt into the protocol. I actually don't remember the command for that. Let me look it up really quickly. 
Um, protocol. I think it's protocol.version. Yes. Uh, so you do git dash c protocol.version equals two. And so this will tell git to opt into the new enough protocol, which understands depth equals one when fetching. So you'll do this. Uh, oh, we need to do fetch origin that. Uh, we need to tell it what remote to go from. And you'll see that it has fetched this, and it's also done it very quickly. We've we've done this in like, well, I didn't time it, but less, less than a second, essentially. Uh, and you'll see that we fetched the tag, and it is now present in fetch head. So we can do git checkout fetch head. And this will check out that revision. Now, again, like before, when we did depth one, this doesn't have any history here. It's, again, grafted. Uh, but with protocol version two, you can graft it any commit in the repository. It doesn't have to be a branch. So you can you can basically get a um, a faster clone for anything. Uh, just because this was a little bit muddled, let's uh, let's do that again. Just just so you see it again. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna delete pigment hooks. Get in it pigment hooks. And then get remote add origin github.com pigment slash pigment hooks. And then we're going to do get fetch depth equals one origin version 3.0.0. And we're going to use protocol uh, version two. Now, I didn't mention this before, but this position of this dash C argument is important. It has to come before the command because it's an option to get and not an option to fetch. And the options are a little bit weird that way. Uh, but once you do this, it will do the fetch. Can it find the remote repository? at github.com colon pre-commit slash oh dang it <laughs> of course while trying to reproduce it the second time i also made the same mistake as the first time but anyway and then finally get check out fetch head anyway hopefully that's useful hopefully you can see you know this is this is a way to check out an arbitrary uh commit at a revision and you know get clone depth equals one uh, Python slash C Python. This is a way to to clone the default branch with uh, a depth of one. Of course, C Python is still pretty big even when you do depth one. But anyway, hopefully this was helpful. If you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.